Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Today was a great day because I received four Pen BBS pens. Two of them were bought on Etsy and two of them were bought on a Tobu Focus. And these are those new pens that showed up, I think, on Instagram. Uh, Doug and, and a few others went ballistic over them and tried to order them and had some issues, but mine have been delivered. And because of the ice and snow that we had, they couldn't deliver these initially. They left me a non-delivery notice, which was in the snow. So thankfully I checked the tracking because I was doing the video on the orders I made from Etsy, and I saw that this was sitting in the post office waiting for me to pick up. This is an extremely well-wrapped package, and that's what they do. Shipping was not inexpensive. We'll give you those financials a little bit later. But I need to open this up and look at these pens and see what's the excitement about this new model from Pen BBS. I thought I would take you on a trip through Tobu Focus. Here's the John Long page. As you can see, there's a lot of different Pen BBS products available. A lot of ink, and I've bought ink here in the past. The pricing is extremely good on a lot of these pens. I just wondered what 29 was, so let's take a look at it. And 29, I think, is might be the latest generation of ink from Pen BBS. Now we're going to dive into what it looks like when you select the pen on Pen BBS. Here we go with the 500. As you can see in the middle is all the different colors. And as you pass the mouse over them, it shows you the color, the model number, and the color. And to the left, it'll show you the picture if you click on the little thumbnail. It's just done well. I think it's easy to navigate. And it's easy to select a pen that you would like. If you look at the details on the 500, you'll notice there's a lot of interesting characteristics. Here's the two aspects of buying on Tabu Focus. You pay for the initial purchase that they make from Tobu, then they buy the pens, they arrive, they inspect them, repackage them, and then charge you for the shipping that they need to send them to you. So basically the shipping costs as much as the pens cost. That's the nature of the business. If you want to buy these pens, that's what you do. I sometimes have a visual challenge with certain things. When I first saw these two boxes, I saw this 480, which is like kind of like an inventory number. And on other pens I have from MBBS, the first three digits are the model. But obviously in this situation, that's not the case because the model is down here, 348. 16, which is the clear glass in fine, and the 34821, which is vermouth, also in fine. I did put stickers on here because originally I didn't see that, and I thought this was a 480 box, but obviously not. And yes, I filmed this first with empty pens, and then I realized I did not read the label properly, so I refilmed it after I had inked the clear 348. So just for my own mental health, here is a 48052, which I recently got. Well, I received it the same day I received this pen. And as you can see, that inventory number is a 480024. So when I saw that 480 here, I was confused. Now I'm no longer confused. So the 348, the first impression I get is it's a little chunky pen. You know, the barrel's wider 
and bigger in diameter than most other barrels that uh, Penn BBS has used, especially in this shape. And it is reminiscent of the 308, which has 266 on the band. They never changed the tooling to represent when this model went from 266 to 308. And as we look at both of these here, we'll see the similarities. I mean, it's different threading, the way that cap finial holds on the clip, but the clip and that clip ring are basically the same. There's some discussions about the clearance of the nib, and I think the 348 has significantly more clearance than the 308. So that should accommodate whatever nib you want to put in there in the number six family. And the cap bands are pretty much the same cap band. It's just a different stamping on it. And obviously the barrel is completely different. I've removed the converter from here because I just think it looks so nice without the converter. And uh, if I would ink up this pen, it would be eyedropper because you love to see the ink sloshing around. And the 348 is going to facilitate that. You can see that breather tube, which extends pretty much up to where that draw piston is located. So to fill, you would take off the blind cap, insert the nib and ink, and use this to expel air, draw up ink. And we will show that later on. So I uh, read that these caps are interchangeable between the 348 and the 308. So we're going to try it with the cap from the vermouth pen because then we can definitely see the difference. And they don't match up. The threading is not the same, so they're not interchangeable, even though they look like they might be. No, caps don't go from one pen to another, at least not in the ones that I have. Here we have the 348 disassembled. As much as I'm going to do. Like the 308, it resembles great engraving on this cap band. You have 348 and test edition. I think that's an interesting model designation. The feed is a different feed and a number of reasons. Number one, it has a breather tube. Number two, it's done differently. We have a standard PEMBBS feed here at the top. And you see it has that little extension. This is a fairly similar feed in it's designed, but the fins are not as long and they're thicker, so therefore they're more stable. Other than that, they've really copied that channel and, and fin design that worked so well. The channel in the new feed appears to be a little bit wider, which I think is great because uh, these pens can run a little dry. The nib is the standard fine nib with that slight upturn and here's the section and it's a very clear that this section is uh, much different than other sections there is no unscrewable nib assembly in there and this flat piece of plastic which accommodates the breather tube is part of the section not part of the nib assembly and you can see how that breather tube extends up through that opening to facilitate the filling. The barrel is done nice. I mean, all of the uh, turned acrylics that Penn BBS uses are just excellent. I've never found any flaws in them. This design, to me, has one major flaw, is this ring can come loose. Of course, now it's not. But that ring can come loose, so when you take off the cap, you got to be careful about that. And I like the fact that they have Pen BBS there at the top of the barrel. Just an interesting little 
Easter egg. This is the real, as I referred to it as the secret sauce. This is not a filling mechanism I've seen in any other pen. Conceptually, it's kind of similar to what that, what I would call piston draw filler is in the 601. So you would pump this on the downstroke, it would push air out the breather tube, you let up, it brings up ink, air out, ink up, air out, ink up. The 601 from Wingsong was great because after three pumps, it was pretty much almost all full. We'll see how efficient this one works. Since this is much smaller, I think it's going to take a lot more pumping to fill it up. But, you know, a few seconds of pumping is not going to make or break anybody's day. And it looks like it'd be a fairly good ink capacity in there. Just showing you this uh, blind cap here because it is definitely... Very clear, very transparent. So we're going to do more comparisons with the 308, which this uh, shares a lot of design traits with. Put it back together. So after I filmed the review of this uh, 348, of course, I read a post on Facebook by Mark Boone, and he said, did he remove this nib collar from his section on his 348? As much as I try, it doesn't come out. But I do agree there's definitely an insert in that section. Gives it kind of like that frosted look. There's an O-ring down here at the, at the bottom, which is typical of the nib assemblies that Pen BBS uses in their other pens. And if you look closely at the top, you'll see that insert is separate from this machined piece of acrylic. So there's definitely uh, a nib collar in here. I'm not a fan of removing it, at least not for now, because that nib comes out very easily. And it is keyed. So when you put the feed and nib back in, you got to move it until you feel it goes in, and then it goes in very easily. And also comes out very easily. And one of the reasons why I think that's the case is, is the nib lines up with the pen BBS that's in that injection molded Mark Boone uh, filling assembly there. Another little tidbit of detail and a wonderful amount of work went into this pen before it even made it as a prototype or whatever you want to call it. Appreciate it. Here we have some Pen BBS pens to compare. The 348, the 308, the 480, and the 349. I do not have a 349 in clear. I have two. They were only around for a short period of time, but it had some interesting quirks to it. This ball clip is definitely the only pen I've seen that on. It has a little metal insert in between the section and the barrel, which doesn't seem to be of any particular use. It has a similar small cap band. So it's interesting. So these pens are all very close dimensionally. The barrel dimensions are all 12.8 millimeters. The length varies from about 144 to 147 millimeters, but it's not a, anything significant different in dimensions. Let's look a, bit, a little bit more closely at some of the details. The top finial is the one that seems to have gone through some changes. Where we see some differences is in the evolution of the finial. In the 308, there's no metal screw or anything holding that finial down. You have an exposed ring here, which is integral with the clip. So when you screw this down onto the cap, it secures that clip. When they went to the 349, they took a different design. Even though you still see the threads, there's a screw here. And 
the cap doesn't have a uh, ring here for the clip. So the clip is inserted, screwed into place, and then a cap liner, which is very small, is put into place, which is also here in the 480. So these share the same design on the finial. Here in the 348, it's another different design, more similar to the 308 in the way that finial screws into the barrel, except here the threads are in the finial, here they're not. So aesthetically, I like the change that they made there. And of course, obviously, different clips, but the clip on the 348 is the same design as the clip on the 308. The 349 is an entity into itself, and the 480 is that kind of, I would say, the second or third generation, the sword clip. Besides being very similar in dimensions, they're also very, very similar in weight. They're all about 20 grams as the pen goes, plus or minus a gram. I actually thought the 348 felt a little bit girthier, a little bit heavier, but the scales don't support that. It's just the way it feels in my hand. Can be deceiving. A lot of the weight of the pen is depending upon where the weight is focused and concentrated and how the pen is balanced in your hand. And that affects how it feels when you write. So how does the 348 compare to other pens, which you might be familiar with? Well, here's the Pilot 78G, a Metropolitan, and a Lamy All-Star. The 348 holds its ground against the All-Star, especially in length and girth. These two pens are on the small side, but again, they're there for comparison. So I think it's the perfect thing to use, at least from my view. Nice color. Will look good in this glass transparent pen. Oh, this is always so much fun. So we're going to dip the pen in, so the ink is about halfway up the section. And then we're going to pump it. Well, took two pumps for ink to come up. And it's certainly coming up very slowly. It's going to take a lot of pumps to fill this up. It looks like it's only a, up a drop or two. I haven't counted, but I can see the ink level starting to rise in the barrel. I think we're almost done. Wow, nice fill. Just took a lot of pumps. So one of the challenges with this is that there was a lot of air that got pulled up into the barrel. You can see the ink level starting to settle down a little bit lower. There's still a great amount of ink in there. You also notice there's these two O-rings. I wasn't able to disassemble this top of the barrel, but I didn't really want to. Being able to remove the piston is all you really need to do for maintenance. Hopefully no ink gets past those two O-rings, but I'm comfortable that it won't. Yeah, it's a decent amount of ink. I like the way it looks in, in this pen. I think it's time to put nib on paper. So now we're ready to explore how this standard fine nib from Pen BBS in this new 348 writes. So this feels pretty much like most every other Pen BBS pen that's shaped and designed like this. Section is the same size as the 308 section. We'll give you those dimensions. It feels fine in the hand. It's plenty long enough. But for those of you that want to post, we have news. You can post it, but it doesn't stay. It's not really a pen designed to post. And Pen BBS has a few pens like that. 500 comes to mind. And I'm certain that they focused on the filling system and making certain everything was robust. And when they were all done, there wasn't any room for that cap 
to post deeply and securely, which is what some people like, but I don't really post that much. This is a pen I don't mind not posting. So that's how it goes. We're going to put some of that Navajo turquoise on this Fabriano paper. This nib is very, very smooth, as smooth as any nib I've used, and certainly is one of the smoothest pen BBS nibs I ever used. It looks like a standard nib with that little upturn at the end, but it feels nice on the paper. It's certainly a fine line. It's it's a little bit on the dry side, but this ink I think is a little on the dry side, at least in this pen. We're going to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.4. It doesn't really get any checks, but we'll give it one for a unique filling system. I don't think it's an improvement over some other filling systems. I like the filling system in the 500, the 355, which is that uh, draw filler. Or the 456, which is uh, vacuumatic. I probably would say this, I would prefer this over the 456 from a filling system. You get a little bit over 2 milliliters. That's what I have in there now of ink. That should last a long time with this fine nib that is on the dry side. So I'm just impressed with another filling system. The magnetic filling system had some of the same traits that this does, meaning it's a barrel that is pretty much just ink. No rod, no piston, nothing else to displace ink. Just a, a large reservoir. And I probably could have put another maybe three or four tenths of a milliliter of ink in there. So it might top out close to, you know, three milliliters, which is more than enough ink for almost anybody. You may ask, uh, what nibs might I put in my new 348 when I get tired of that standard pen BBS? Well, here are two of the latest grinds from Arlo Palmer. The one on the left here is a nice architect grind. And the one on the right here is a unique grind. We're going to call it the Arlo Palmer Special, where he took a 1.5 millimeter nib, ground it to like a 3B when you write with it regularly, and then ground the top of it to a cursive italic. You can see how he flattened it out, put a little bit of edges on it. I got a letter from Arlo written with this nib and it looked phenomenal. So look forward to an upcoming video where I use these nibs and show you how they write. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed yet another new pen from Pen BBS. Who knows when it might or might not ever appear in major distribution like Etsy and eBay. But I'm certainly happy that I had an opportunity to snag two of these. This one will be used with pleasure. Put some ink on paper, enjoy your pens, hope all of you are safe, healthy, and happy. We've reached the end of this video. Starts up right away. We're going to say bye. I like this color.